Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Path of Titans video. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys 10 beginner tips. For those of you that are newer to the game, you don't really know how to get started. I'm going to try to give you guys tips on what you can do to get better at the game. And that can hopefully help you out overall have a better experience. Now most of you guys obviously that have been playing this game, you might know already what I'm about to mention. But for those of you that don't, make sure you stick around and hit that thumbs up if I do help anyone out. So in case you're new to the channel, if you guys don't know, I did make my own community server and you were able to join it. Now it is open to the public. So it's called Simply Jurassic. It can now hold up to 100 players. I just increased it yesterday from 75 to 100 max players. You can see I added in some Halloween decorations just to get in the, uh, you know, the Halloween spirit, which is in SLL. So if you guys want to come out, check out the decorations. You're more than welcome. And if for whatever reason, if the decorations are not here once you get here, that means it was a server reset and every reset I have to manually load it in. So that'll probably be the only reason you won't see this, but otherwise you should see it. So the first tip that I get asked quite often is what is the best beginner dino to use once you're starting off? Now I know a majority probably just go straight for the big stuff, which is like the T-Rex or maybe the Spino. And you know, you wanna be the biggest predator already, but I do not think these are the best ones to start off with because it can be a hassle trying to grow when you don't really know how to play the game. So when I first started, I made a dino that was relatively good in size, also fast and fun to use, which is the aloe. I recommend the aloe is a perfect starter dino for beginners. It gives you a chance to really run around, explore the map, run away from other predators that try to attack you. Now for the aloe, I recommend you guys do a speed build or a balance build if you must. I highly recommend just a speed build. You do not want to do anything to decrease his speed because I feel like that's where he really shines. Now you can start as more smaller dinos, which can be good for getting the lay of the land. So the conch or this guy can definitely be good as well. Another thing you could do when you first start out is look for other dinos that you could possibly group up with. And the way you could do that is herbs can only group up with herbs and carnivores can only group up with carnivores. So you can't really group up with anyone that's out of your category. So this Anki right here um, is basically a herb. I'm a herb. So if you want to invite someone to a group, hit this on the wheel right here. And then boom, you can see he accepted it. And now they are both in my group because they're both herbs. And boom, now we have some group quests. You can see on the right side, we have some extra group quests now. And that is an excellent way to grow faster and you have more protection. I mean, obviously they're babies, but once you guys get bigger, you can protect each other. And that's how I made a lot of friends on this game, just by randomly adding people to the group and walking around with them. The third thing you guys want to do is find the best questing spots. Now, the best questing spots means a safe uh, area that's relatively safe, that gives a good amount of quest, easy quest, and can be very good. Now, obviously, LBM, which you guys may see referred to a lot in global chat, is this home cave right here. And this section actually gives a good amount of quest, and it's very, very easy. Cascades, which is around this cave right here, this gives relatively easy quest to accomplish. Tyrant's Gorge, and all the way up here on the top left corner, they also give good quests. So you just find out the best quest locations that are much easier, less populated. SLL, which is right here, can be a lot more complicated because it's more populated and you most likely will die. So try to quest at the outer parts of the map. Another thing you guys probably don't know about is trophies. So when you kill an adult dino, you get a trophy from them and you could bring it to your home cave for extra points. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So we have an adult Stego here. Thank you for helping me out with this video. So once you kill the adult, you will see it says take trophy. That's how you know you killed an adult. Once you do that, you pick up the trophy You'll know you'll have it because you'll see it in your mouth. And then once you pick it up, you'll get a quest on the right side to deliver to the nearest home cave. And the nearest home cave will be highlighted green. And you'll also be able to see it when you face its direction, which is right in front of me. And then once you get it to the home cave and you bring it inside, it should automatically give you about almost one bar full of growth. Extra XP. Now there's a cooldown in between, so obviously you can't like boost around with this with your friends. It's I believe it's every hour you can do a trophy, so uh, just keep that in mind as well. What people like to do, if you're already an adult, you can give it to the babies, find a baby dino or someone else that needs it. Also keep in mind when you have the trophy in your mouth, if you do any type of biting attack, it will drop it. And if it's on the ground for a, a, 
a extended period of time, it will dis despawn and disappear. So make sure you hold it in your mouth or have someone else hold it. Do not leave it on the ground for too long because it will disappear and then you lose the whole trophy and then you most likely will be mad. Next up is water quality. So if you guys don't know, when you do look at the water, you can see it says 100%. And if you guys are wondering what that means, is that is the quality of the water. And when you drink water or when any dinos drink water, the water quality goes down and the water gets dirtier. And once water quality reaches 0%, the water will be fully dirty. The fish will stop spawning in there and you won't be able to drink from it until it goes back up. So you can see we drunk some water and it went down to 91%. If by chance you're by water that is at 0% and you're about to get thirsty, you will need to find another body of water, which should possibly be over here or over here. Keep in mind for the big lake though, if someone, let's say they're drinking the lake from up here, it will lower the quality for the whole entire lake. It doesn't matter if you're way down here. If someone's drinking it from up here, the whole lake water quality goes to 0%. So just keep that in mind. That's probably the worst place to get water is the big lake. You would think it's the best, but it's the worst. So you might want to go to these little ponds out here if you really need to get water and a lot of places are zero water quality. Also keep in mind that rain actually adds to the water quality. So if it's raining, if you notice it starts to rain, then um, the water quality will go up in the lakes. So you could also check that out and get more water. So here's a hunger tip when you play herbivores. So if you notice you're getting hungry and you cannot find any berry bushes, now all herbs can eat from regular berry bushes that look just like this. When you go up to it, it'll say berries. And by any chance, if you're literally about to starve to death and you cannot find any of these bushes, what you can do is switch your metabolism. So the trick you can do is once you switch it, you're able to eat flowers, nuts, roots, and fruit, but your food will drain much faster when you have this metabolism on. So what you can do is when you're starving, you can't find a berry bush, put the forager uh, metabolism on, and then you can eat from the roots and the flowers. Now, keep in mind the roots also give you water as well. They bring up your water and they bring up your food. So if you're really low on food and water, you would eat this. We are. And then you can also eat regular flowers, which are found in open fields just like this. And you can satisfy your hunger. Now after, your food will start to drain faster than normal because you have that metabolism. So once you get full from the flowers and the roots or whatever you eat, you switch it back to the herbivore one. So you back to moderate food drain and then you're good to go and your food's going to drain slower. Um, and then yeah, just repeat that process now roots and flowers and nuts and all that stuff are pretty easy to find throughout the map Berry bushes are mostly found in just in open fields like this So you should be easy to find some and then if you're a carnivore What you can do is find these corpses around the map and they pretty much give you free food um, And you could find these in various locations. They're not as common as the berry bushes, but they are around I did make a separate video on some locations for berry bushes and for corpses If you want to check out that video, I will link it in the description so you guys can go find out where more corpses are Another thing I see people ask or comment is they can never find players on this map granted this map is huge Compared to the new Gondwa map coming out I feel like that map's gonna be better for finding people But if you want to find people on this map there's literally only like two to three locations to where you'll find more than probably one dino. Now on official servers, you'll probably find a dino here and there wandering the outskirts of the map doing quests. But if you really want to know where the action is, where the hotspots are, I'm going to give you guys three locations and they're all basically in the middle of the map. So the first one is LBM Little Brook Meadow, which is right here, the home cave on top of the big lake. This whole area mostly always active. And if that area is not active, then that means the majority of the players will be over here. They nicknamed this SLL, which is Spine Lizard Lagoon, and you would find players here at the central waystone also. And then sometimes you'll find players here and sometimes not. The cave right next to LBM, Tyrant's Gorge, and you would sometimes find people in there, but it's not as common. But if you want a cave to log off at that is a safe area, this one is much safer than the LBM cave because most likely they'll be camping the cave over here and you will probably get killed. Now next we're going to talk about doing a little combat. Now I don't have anyone else to really help me with this demonstration, but if you notice you're solo and you're about to get jumped by let's say a pack of something and you want to stop them from circling you all the time, what you can do is find like an area that has a cliff. So let's say this for example, let's say I'm getting circled by whatever pack. And you know you're going to take hits regardless, so you want to just put up a good fight without getting hit from behind. 
what you can do is find like a cliff or an edge hit your bottom left trigger or whatever the button is for your precise movement precise movement is so you could turn like this because otherwise without it you would just turn like that so you want to make sure you have precise movement on back up onto the cliff and then that way they cannot jump you from behind and whichever way they come you will be able to get hits off them even if they bite you you'll still get a hit back in and if that gets i had people do this to me where i had a rex do the same thing and i couldn't even get a hit on him without him biting me and i literally almost died from it so where no matter where you are there's tons of cliffs in this game if you get attacked or jumped find something with a ledge behind you where they can't attack from behind and then when they charge you you can easily get some free hits but if you're on a short cliff like this um, obviously something tall, like maybe a Spino or a T-Rex can bite you from behind. So you would have to go on maybe a taller cliff back there or just something a little bit higher. And because this is LBM right now, this is the LBM spot above the cave. And this spot mostly always has people here. So this little cliff right here could come in handy if you do get jumped. And then the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the combat weight that you have to consider when you fight other dinos. So let me give you a little big example. The EO trike, which is the dino I'm on right now, his headbutt without the sharpened horns does 70 damage. He has a combat weight of 7,000, which is the highest combat weight for an official dino. 7,000, also the Spino and the T-Rex has a 7,000 combat weight. Now the headbutt for the EO trike is 70 damage, but because the combat weight is pretty much max at 7,000, that 70 damage will do a good amount of damage to any dino the same size or smaller than you. Any dino smaller than me will immediately take way more damage than someone with the same combat weight would. Here's an example. Eo Trike, 7,000 pounds, 70 headbutt damage. And then you have the Styra. The Styra is basically, I just call them the mini trike. The Styra is 3,100 pounds and also has a headbutt of 70 damage. Now you would think that his damage would do the same damage as an EO trike because they're both 70 damage. But because the EO trike weighs basically double of what this guy weighs, the trike's headbutt would do double the amount of damage that this guy would on any other type of dino. So with this same 70 damage, if I went to attack a Rex or something, it would be barely hurting him. But if I attacked a dino that was my combat weight or, or lighter, then I would be doing significant amount of damage with this headbutt. But those are the tips I have for you guys in this video. Like I said, most of you guys must or probably already know most of these things. But for the newer beginner players, um, hopefully at least one of these tips can help you out in the long run. And don't forget to hop on my server, Simply Jurassic, if you ever want to play with me or with a lot of my subscribers. Because at nighttime, this server gets packed, 100 players, and we have a good time. We do events, boss fights, all that stuff. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe for more POT content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.